the second half against Illinois, we have found our rhythm offensively. Let's do it for 40 minutes. Doubles in the corner to Jackson for three. Got it. Between the circles. August drives right down the middle of the lane for the two-handed jam. Farrell alley you inside for Austin Torres, who completes the posterizing alley-oop jam. How much better have we gotten in a week with what we did at Illinois and then coming back and doing this? You know, we hadn't done two in a row yet. To Jackson, alley-oop for that, and we've got a second attack. Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball. I'm Jack Dolan. He, of course, is the head coach of the Fighting Irish, Mike Bray. We're coming to you from the Cozy Pit, the Notre Dame practice gym below the level of Purcell Pavilion. A lot of great work done this past week, both on the practice floor and your one game against Stony Brook. There's no question. Well, a lot of great work has been done here in the pit. We've always gotten better. We kind of hide down here. But you're right, a week of growth for us, Jack, and a good win over a very good Stony Brook team. You have played a very difficult non-conference schedule, and right now in Joe Lenardi's RPI rankings, you have an RPI of 35. You know, our strength of schedule non-league is going to help us. We have a few more we'd like to add to the resume before we open up in Charlottesville with our first ACC game. But that strength of schedule schedule is going to be very, very positive to us come March. It was a good and big win over a good Stony Brook team. All the highlights coming up right after this. Coming up on Inside Notre Dame Basketball. And we've done a good job of getting to feel a team's offensive pattern. And sometime in the second half, we'll jump the passing lanes. He did a great job doing that. Well, I like any spot. As long as I can see the basket, that's what I wanted. But the corners were my favorite areas. Best dunker on the team. I mean, worst dunker on the team. Bonzi. Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners. Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also sponsored by Delta Airlines. Proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics. Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. On Tuesday, you made a good Stony Brook team look mediocre with a big 86-61 win. You know, it was a methodical win for us. I thought we put both halves together, both ends of the floor together. Defensively, we were excellent. Offensively, especially in the second half, we got into that efficiency that we're known for. Uh, very proud of the growth. I think the practice the weekend before, the double sessions helped us. Boy, you got off to a good start. You were up 10 less than five minutes into the game. You're right, and that was a game situation we did in practice the day before. I put 20 minutes on the clock, we did a center jump, and we played till about the 16-minute mark. And the white shirts got off to a very good start. I was happy to see that happen in a game. Starting a game and starting a half are such a key during a season. Both Zach August and Demetrius Jackson with double-doubles. The first career double-double for Demetrius. You know, both of those guys have set a great tone. They're playing great. They should be playing great. They're veterans. They're our best players. But I'm very, very proud of how they know who they are. And in the context of our teamwork, they're getting their stuff. The end of the first half. It's an amazing move that Demetrius Jackson has the jab step step back jumper that gave you an eight point halftime lead. You know what he's done is instead of going all the way and jumping into people big guys and trying to draw the foul he's stopped and worked on his mid-range game and I think that's very important for him moving forward. When you lose a Grant and Connaughton you knew other guys had to step up including VJ Beecham and he has and he did again. Well VJ Beecham two big threes in the second half to kind of give us breathing room but you know VJ continues to get confident he rebounded the ball well for us too, Jack, but uh, he's just such a key for us, and I'm so thrilled to see him get more confident each week. Bonzi Colson was so good last year, kind of as the fireman. You send him in there to go get some rebounds and change the tempo of the game. This year, he's a starter. He's been adjusting to it. He almost got a double-double. I like that he kept it simple. He got off to a good start. He was around the basket rebounding. He was around the basket scoring. He didn't think about too many things. I think the more we simplify for Bonzi, the better. But when you have Zach August 
and Bonzi Colson getting into double-double range. That's a pretty powerful front line. Another guy that's really grabbed playing time, Matt Farrell. He played 20 minutes, not big statistical numbers, but he did a lot of things. Three points, two rebounds, a steal, a couple of assists, and no turnovers. He's averaging almost 17 minutes a game. What he does is he gives us another playmaker off the dribble, and it takes some pressure off Demetrius and Steve. He's going to make shots. He's too good a shooter, but he's become a key reserve for us. Could Austin Torres have had a more productive five minutes with four points and four rebounds? Amazing energy guy again. He comes in in the first half, runs the floor for a layup that gives us some breathing room. Active defensively, and of course he caught the highlight film lob dunk at the end of the game. What do you think was the best thing to come out of the Stony Brook win? Two halves back to back. You know, I think we've played three really good halves now. Second half of Illinois and the whole Stony Brook game, getting off the good start at the beginning of the game. I think just a total team effort and the starters playing more disciplined in their roles. And when we come back, since this is our last show of 2015, we're going to take a State of the Union look at this year's Notre Dame men's basketball team. We've reached that mid-December time where you have a tendency to play one game a week for a little while. So that gives us more time to look at the big picture. So let's begin with what has pleased you the most so far this season from your team. How much they want it as a group. They put a lot of pressure on themselves and they have a high bar of expectations. I need to keep them loose sometimes because they're really hard on themselves when they don't do well. How we've embraced wanting to guard together on the defensive end whether we're in man, but also developing our 2-3 zone, which was so good to us at Illinois. Learning how to continue to be efficient offensively when we have the two big guys in. I think we're growing in that area. And then the development of the three guys who at this point are our guys coming off the bench, Farrell, Ryan, and Torres, those guys getting a feel for how to come in and help us. When you look at that starting group, who are you most happy with right now? Two guys, Demetrius Jackson and Zach August. Your two main guys, your two best players, are playing like your two best players, and they're leading like your captains. Very pleased with both of them. Now, some people may say, well, duh, that's what they're supposed to do, but you've been around this long enough. What you're supposed to do and what you actually do are two different things, and it's not always easy to lead both on and off the court. It's exhausting. Uh, I remember Ryan Humphrey, t Humphrey telling me after his senior year, Coach leading was sure is tiring, and Demetrius has even said that. There's a lot of responsibility being a leader and captain in our program. We've had many that have done a great job. You know, they've come before Zach and Demetrius, but I think they have really grown into that role. They feel a huge team responsibility, and I'm extremely proud of them. Now, what does this team need to work on as you head into that first conference game at Virginia? I think still consistently defensively, being able to get stops consistently and really be able to rely on our defense, tuning up our zone defense and some of our three-quarter zone press stuff to look at that before we get into league play, and still trying to find offensively good spacing and what helps us in our movement, how to put Bonzi and Zach in the right positions offensively on that end of the floor. You know, people are always fascinated by your rotation. A lot of years your rotation is set in stone by the time the conference season begins. Other years it's in flux. What do you think this year is going to be? I think we're going to have a lot of changes in that. Right now we're playing eight guys and we're happy with how those guys are playing. Luckily we've been healthy, you know, and, and that can always creep into it. Um, but I think you always have an open mind to what else is developing. And Martin Gebbin, Austin Burgett, and Rex Fluger are doing a great job in practice. Just kind of hard to get them in there right now. But you have to have an open mind because I certainly remember Bonzi Colson doesn't play the first half of the year, is a key guy the second half of the year. When we come back, we'll take you back to the summer when Austin Carr paid a visit to this campus and spent some time with Demetrius Jackson. The first floor concourse that surrounds Purcell Pavilion is aptly named after the greatest player in Notre Dame history, Austin Carr. This summer, Austin came back to campus and spent some time with Demetrius Jackson. As befitting a university environment, the visit became a teaching session of sorts between the Hall of Famer and the Notre Dame star. Four in a row for Demetrius. 
Demetrius Jackson. Sometimes guys come out, they just don't have it. Some guys come out, they're too hyper. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. A point guard has to understand each player's mental psyche and what they're all about. And at the same time, you got to get off yourself. Analytics has become such a huge part of sport now. Do you pay attention to where you make the most shots from and, and work on areas that you don't shoot well from? Do you do, do you do that? Yeah, yeah, I do do that. And also the coaches recognize that and they help me with that too. I knew what my weaknesses were and what my strengths were, but I really had no idea. But now with analytics, you know yeah, exactly. You know. And everybody else knows too. And everybody else knows too. Yep. So you can work on those areas though. Get in the gym, place like this at night. You know, nobody in here, just get in here and just work, 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 work. You do your thing, go home, do your study, and go to bed. And that, that, that would be my life, you know. But uh, it's the only problem with analytics to me is that it still has, you still got to come out here and play. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so, that's the one variable that you can't, the human part of it. So back when you played, what was your favorite spot uh, to go to on the floor? Where was your sweet spot? Well, I like any spot. As long as I can see the basket, that's what I wanted. But the corners were my favorite areas. Cars, fade away. Oh, wow. Here's cars. He hits again. Where's your sweet spot? <sighs> my sweet spot, I would say, last year, was this over here, the three-point line, this area. We had a couple plays where I'm coming off the pin downs like you right. talked about. And so um, I would come right here um, and just shoot it as soon as I caught it, uh, whether I was open or not. You know, I was always, always shooting that shot. And I shot, I think that's where I shot the highest percentage from, right there, right there on the court. Jackson fires it up at the shot clock buzzer and knocks it down! Wow! You know, you guys have done such a great job last season. How are you going to handle this season? Because everybody knows about yeah, you now. Yeah. You're not going to sneak up on them yeah. now. You're ACC champions. I mean, they know, yeah. you know, the big ND is in town now. What's, what's, how are you going to handle that, 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 that expectation? Yeah, um, that's that's one thing me and Coach have been talking about, just kind of blocking out the noise. Um, so we just want to continue to have our, our poor mentality. Um, that's one thing me and Coach talked about. Um, after my freshman year being 15, 17, um, we really had a poor mentality. And so yeah. um, when we, we came back and we started workouts three days after, you know, three days after. Um, so we never we never got a break. We just had this poor mentality. We kept working, kept pushing each other, and stuff was hard. And so we just want to continue to have that mentality, keep an edge about ourselves so that we can go out and, you know, do the same things we did last year. Yeah, hey, that's good. That's good. Now, it, it, going into your junior year, now, I know you're thinking about the next level, mm -hmm. you know, but as a, as a, past player who has gone, had a chance and had all the injuries I had, make sure you, you get your degree. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my father used to tell me, he said, son, don't go four years and waste your four years of your life. You know, when you come away from Notre Dame, you have a degree. Yeah. You know, have something to show for. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that would be my best advice because as talented as you are, and which I found out the hard way, anything can happen, one false move and boom, it's over. So make sure you get, because what you get in there, they can't take from you. Yeah. All yeah. right? Yes, sir. It's a pleasure, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Another thing you've worked really hard at is to get the former guys to come back. How powerful is it to get Austin Carr to come back and talk to your players? Well, Austin Carr is our guy. And of course, it's a special spot in my heart. D.C. Catholic mm -hmm. school guy, Mack and DeMatha. But Austin, I am so pleased at how supportive he's been of me and my program and with our players. Um, but a powerful ambassador for the university, a powerful ambassador for our program, a role model for our current players. Folks, when we come back, we'll have this week's Ask Coach Bray question. It's time now for this week's Ask Coach Bray question presented by the experts at TireRack.com. This week's question comes from Tim Boyle of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Tim asked, Coach, when you were growing up, what player did you want to play like on the court? Phil Ford. Really? Phil Ford. When I was a high school player at DeMatha, Phil Ford was the guy running the North Carolina offense. 
I used to go out in my backyard and run the four corners by myself and really looked up. And, and then the guards at Maryland, John Lucas, Brad Davis, Mo Howard. I grew up in suburban Maryland. Lefty Grizzell's three-guard offense. Those were the guys that I really looked up to. And then you ended up cutting your collegiate coaching <laughs> teeth at Duke, at arch Duke. rival for both of them. And Phil was the assistant, and we would be in the same gyms recruiting together. So that was always, we became very good friends. We were recruiting the same players, but <clears throat> he was just, um, he was fabulous to watch. And you were a young guard, you really looked up to him. We were talking earlier about how well V.J. Beecham is playing this season. In fact, folks, he's playing the best basketball of his career, and that has earned him the right to run this week's Inside Notre Dame Basketball Fast Break. First car you ever drove? A Cadillac. Favorite musical group or artist? Jay-Z. Who was your role model? My parents. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? Uh, I'm a marketing major. What did you do on your first date? Went to a movie. Favorite NBA player? Kawhi Leonard. Favorite thing to do in relaxing? Uh, just chill and listen to music. Favorite part of practice? Scrimmaging. Worst part of practice? The defensive drills. Which is better, knocking down a long three, blocking a key shot, or grabbing a big rebound? Knocking down a long three. One thing you always hear from Coach Bray in practice? Uh, way to step up. Assistant coach who is most like Coach Bray? Moose. Best defender on the team? Steve. Best leaper on the team? Demetrius. Best dunker on the team? Me. Worst dunker on the team? Bonzi. Best dresser on the team? Zach. Worst dresser on the team? Bonzi. Best singer on the team? Zach. Freestyle swimming race, one lap. Who wins, you or Coach Bray? I can't really swim, so I'm gonna have to say Coach Bray. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I need to get him some swimming lessons, but uh, I am so proud of him, Jack. He is playing so well, and you can see, even his eyes in that interview, he's a confident young man right now. And he doesn't always follow the crowd. Martin Inglesby, the coach who's most like you. Yeah, how about that? You know, you, you, it's hard to scout DJ. There's not a scouting report on him. He's silent sometimes. Coach and I will be back to wrap up this week's show right after this timeout. As we wrap up this week's show, there's a look at all of your remaining games the rest of the month, but you'll notice we also added an event called Final Exams. There may be no bigger game than Final Exams, but, uh, you know, there's power left in our non-league schedule. There's power already on our resume with what we've played, so we have a chance to finish strong in the non-league portion. Before final exams begin on Monday, you play a good Loyola of Chicago team at Purcell on Sunday. I would say Loyola is out of the mold of Milwaukee, who won at Wisconsin the other night. Stony Brook, who's going to be the champion of the America East. They are a Missouri Valley team that can give us fits. We have to be very ready to play. Coach, thank you and good luck. Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to all our fans out there. And that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. We, of course, will return after the new year with all the highlights of the final games of 2015 and a preview of the team's season ACC conference opener at Virginia. Until then, thanks so much for watching and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.